We're using React and TypeScript, which means we're using ES6 and ES6 classes. We'll take a look more at that in this step. We will start by simplifying our tests, kind of going back to where we were at the end of the first step. And then I will delete some of the code here and put this back to just saying hello react and lean this line and with this my tests should pass let's do another approach to the hardwired string uh, instead I'm going to define a variable a constant called label and then this is in scope of this uh, render function so I can just refer to it auto complete to complete it and my test should pass I could take this and move this up to be a what's called a field a value that's on the class and I would need then need to say this dot label since it's a value at the scope level of the class and my test should pass again Let's take a look at event handlers. ES6 introduced a concept called arrow functions, small anonymous inline functions. Very useful for event handlers. So I'm going to do an on click. And this on click is just going to, for now, not do an arrow function, it's just going to do an alert. Hello world. And we get an error message immediately. What's happening is this is being invoked immediately and the alerts being invoked immediately and it returns a void typescript is telling us that the on click handler can't assign a void to that uh, so what we want to do is execute this later when the event is fire event and this is where arrow functions come to the rescue so we will instead put an arrow function and then have the arrow function execute alert going out of full screen mode so that we can get to our browser now I'll come over and click on the link to, to open this in the browser. And when I click, I get the hello world. Inline handlers like this aren't easily testable. They have some performance impact. So let's instead have a method to handle it. And we'll put our alert in here. And then my uh, on-click handler can then refer to this dot handle click. We'll also have the handler change to actually display the label. So I'll instead say this dot label. And now I'll save it. And when I go back to my browser and click on it, I'll open up the JavaScript console. When I click on it, I get a mile long traceback basically saying that I've got an HTML unknown element and that's the problem. The this in here is bound not to the instance of the class component, but instead the event that was clicked on. Now we could change the handler to something like this, put in a arrow function, but we're back to the frowned upon pattern of an arrow function and an event handler. Instead, we can bind the arrow function to the component. This is going to get a little bit freaky. So I'll say equals and then make this into an arrow function instead of a method. This is now a property instead of a method. And we go back to the heading and we change this back to just a regular old this dot handle click. Go back over to the browser after the reload everything works again. Let's take a little bit of a look at JSX and TSX in action. Let's say I want to put a CSS class on this like class equal foo. Um, I get an error telling me that um, I've got something called class which doesn't exist on this and that's because in JSX some of these special names like the onclick handlers and the class attribute have to be spelled in a different way to be JSX compliant. When I change it to that, it works fine. You can see that I wasn't really getting an autocomplete on class. Instead, I was getting an autocomplete on the class name. So the ID was helping me out on that. Also, in the value, when I type this class name and I accept it in tab, I'm getting a curly bracket instead of double quotes. 
That's because I can put an expression, a JavaScript expression in here, and if I did single quotes, all I could put is a string. I'll get rid of this class name, take a look at a couple of other IDE features. Uh, we can do navigation based on the various elements. So for example, this symbol handle click, maybe I want to navigate to it. And so I use the ID to navigate to it. Perhaps I want to see all the places that it's referenced. I can do find usages and look all through the project and tell me all of the places that this is used. I can go one step further if I want to rename this. I can call it handle clicks. And then all the places that refer to it will get changed and undo that in a single uh, editor transaction.